once said, some succeed by what they know, some by what they do, and few by what they are. And clearly, our 10 finalists have succeeded in all three categories. They've demonstrated that they're winners, and we're very proud of these 10 young men and women. Given that this is such an extraordinary group, it was not easy to decide who gets to fly in the shuttle next January. Our first citizen, private citizen, in space. But I'm confident that when the shuttle lifts off, our winning candidate will soar with it right into the hearts and minds of young people around the country, indeed around the world. We've won one, I think, for American teachers everywhere and also all Americans. Our final decision was, best on, was based on who best met the criteria we laid out at the beginning, originality and creativity, dedication to the teaching profession, a high degree of community involvement, and an ability to communicate the spaceflight experience. We aim to keep our winner and backup candidate very busy in the coming months, training for the flight. But we also will ask the other eight finalists to get involved in the space program as well, mainly because we think they're all too good to let them get away. Over the coming weeks, we'll use their talents to help design lessons and demonstrations on space flight to be conducted by the winning candidate aboard the shuttle next January. Some will be broadcast live, others will be filmed, but all will be shown in classrooms throughout America. And over the coming year, we aim to put them to work at NASA centers and at our headquarters to assist with educational endeavors and activities. At NASA, we have always believed that we must aim high if we are to reach the stars. We are continuing in that tradition with the Teacher in Space project. With it, we hope to communicate to the millions of young people throughout America some of the wonders and mysteries of spaceflight. We also help to, hope to help to restore prestige to the noble profession of teaching, something of which it's been robbed a little bit in recent years. We also hope to strengthen our ties to the educational community and to ensure that our high adventure in space will continue to inspire young people everywhere. Over the past few weeks, our 10 finalists have lived and worked together. They've endured exhaustive and, and really extensive mental and physical tests and a battery of interviews. They've been interviewed more times than you can imagine. And just as we have gotten to know them inside out, so they have gotten to know each other <laughs> as well. They were competitors, of course, but I think they have now become a family. And if in, in my final word to them, I would like to offer them Shakespeare's advice. Do as adversaries do in law, strive mightily, but then eat and drink as friends. And you, may you always remain friends, always, and I think you shall, having had this common experience. Now I have the honor and privilege to introduce to you the Vice President of the United States, Mr. George Bush, who will announce our winners. You can, sir. Well, we're here, here today to announce the first private citizen passenger in the history of space flight. The President said last August that this passenger would be one of America's finest, a teacher. Well, since then, as we've heard, NASA, with the help of the heads of our state school systems, has searched the nation for a, for a teacher with the right stuff. Really, there are thousands, thousands of teachers with the right stuff, and they're committed to quality in education, to teaching their students the basics, reading, writing, mathematics, science, literature, history, to teaching the foundations of our cultural heritage, and to teaching the values that guide us as Americans, and to teaching that important but difficult to obtain quality, clarity of thought. We're honoring all those teachers of merit today, and we're doing something else. Because the finalists here with me and the more than 100 semifinalists will all in the months ahead serve, as Jim has said, as a link between NASA and the nation's school system. These teachers have all received special NASA training to pass on to other teachers and to their students. And together, they and NASA will be a part of an exciting partnership for quality in education. So let me tell you now who our teacher in space will be, and let me say, I thought I was a world traveler, uh, but this uh, tops anything I've tried. And first, the backup teacher who will make the flight if the winner can't, Barbara Morgan of the McCall Donnelly 
Elementary School in McCall, Idaho. Barbara has been a teacher for 11 years. She first taught on the Flathead Indian Reservation in Montana. She currently teaches second grade. Congratulations. And we have a little, uh, little thing for you. And the winner, the teacher who will be going into space, Krista McAuliffe. Where is, is that you? <laughs> Krista teaches in Concord High School in Concord, New Hampshire. She teaches high school uh, social studies. She's been teaching for 12 years. She plans to keep a journal of her experiences in space. Uh, she said that, and here's the quote, just as the pioneer travelers of the Conestoga wagon days kept personal journeys, I, as a space traveler, would do the same. Well, I'm personally looking forward to uh, reading that journal someday. And by the way, Krista, while you're in the program, uh, Concord High obviously will need uh, substitute teachers to uh, fill in. And it's only right that we provide a, uh, one of these substitutes. So the first class you miss, uh, your substitute will be my dear friend and the president's, uh, Bill Bennett, the Secretary of Education. So congratulations to all of you. Uh, good luck, Krista, and God bless all of you. Thank you very much for coming. And you too get one of these. Uh, that's so well done. You want to say something? With your eye on? Yeah. It's, it's not often that a teacher is at a loss for words. I know my students wouldn't think so. I've made nine wonderful friends over the last two weeks. And when that shuttle goes, they might be one body. <laughs> but there's going to be 10 souls that I'm taking with me. Thank you. That's great. That's pretty well done. Well, it's been nice to be with all of you. It's lovely. It's lovely. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Vice President. Thank you all.